things are not looking good. So what I want to do is share where, where are the, the biggest opportunities in this day and age in business. Don't fear failure. As long as it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you what? Stronger. The world is changing. It's changing, right? It's getting hotter. When it rains, it pours. The sea rising, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I'm a firm believer, and I know for a fact, humans are the biggest player to this causing, uh, this cause of, of global warming. I mean, I have no doubt about it. I have just no doubt about it. Unfortunately, I, I, and that's my belief, I believe humans we claim we're so smart, we're the dumbest animals in this planet. We're the only animals that kill each other to the massive scales. We're the only animals that, you know, consume destroying our own planet. I mean, literally, that's what we're doing. We're polluting like never before. We know we're doing those things. We're getting all the resources out. We know we don't have enough resources to last us forever, but we still do it, you know? perfect example I know I mean I got I got family members that do that so you know I hope they don't take it personally but if they do that too bad but look at a smoker right you know smoking is bad for you. you know smoking can cause cancer it's been documented it's been researched it's been it's 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 known and I guarantee you I guarantee you most people that smoke God forbid, you know, uh, get cancer, they're still going to act surprised. Yet, you knew from the beginning, you're engaging in behaviors that will have a negative impact on your body. These videos is not necessarily to bash or, or, or talk about, you know, what, what's happening, but where are the biggest opportunities? Because when there's a huge problem, there's huge opportunities, right? So I'm going to list some of the key opportunities. I got kids and, and now my life is all about them. Like most parents, my, my biggest concern is what world they're gonna inherit, you know, when, when they become adults. The number one opportunity I believe uh, that needs to change and there's some technology in this, but uh, still a lot of opportunity, especially in Africa, is packaging guys. Packaging for products. This plastic packaging is pretty much in over 90% of all products. 20% of all the, the pollution come from packaging, plastic packaging. You know, we, we pretty much use plastic packaging for any product, majority of product. And there's yet, um, there's a few companies using, you know, recycled or, or biodegradable packaging that's a little bit more expensive. But there's, there's a company in, in the Netherlands, uh, uh, I follow that use mushroom. They use mushroom uh, to, 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 to build packaging. But there's huge opportunity in that space, guys. Whether it's packaging for the product, uh, uh, packaging for shipping, all that value chain of packaging from, uh, from product packaging to, to shipping packaging uh, has to be changed. This is a type of investment that is gonna take 10, 15, 20 years to, to, to see a return. Because when it comes to changing our behavior, it requires changing our mindset. And to change our mindset, that takes time. Unfortunately, it takes time. What's that, Leila? Guys, the, the, the immediate need we have right now is in the recycling uh, our business. Man, it's huge opportunity. And recycling is always a challenge because you recycle and that's it. But I think that what's the missing link is what you do with the recycling byproduct. The good thing about recycling, it's an immediate uh, return of investment. You can either have government subsidized because they have to get uh, some recycling uh, um, processes, companies. Now there's no way around it. Or you find a way to sell the byproduct, uh, byproduct 
to a, a manufacturing that might use it for something else in the value chain. Or you build your own value chain, basically, where you recycle and use the product for something. But recycling, again, man, I, I love that space. There's a lot of room for research and development, a lot of room for growth. We've seen organic waste uh, being used for uh, uh, cooking, charcoal type of uh, uh, product, you know, biogas, um, electricity, man, there's so much, so many applications in also huge opportunity, man. Huge, huge opportunity. I'll definitely look into that if you want to be a, a social impact, have a huge impact and, and trying to bring some real value on the ground. Very interesting one. Not the favorite one, but interesting. There's already company in there. It's, it's sanitation, diapers. Yo, having newborns, man, we buy Huggies, man. I try to buy um, what are, reusable diapers. That didn't last too long. Nobody wants to clean them up off the, the, the shit, and it takes a long time, and it takes discipline. Again, mindset. Our mindset was not there yet. Still not there, so we still, you know, that's easy. You put on, you you throw it away. It's, I'm, I'm even ashamed to admit that, but it's a fact. Having a biodegradable diaper that you can throw and or, 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 and it, it degrades after a short period of time, it says it takes over 100 years for diapers uh, to degrade in, in a natural environment. There's huge, huge opportunity in that space, man. Uh, even pads for women. Uh, I forgot his name, but it was a huge story I read about this guy who spent years and years developing um, pads for women. Finally, had a, had a developed a, 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 a product very good in absorbing and, and also biodegradable. Uh, but uh, I've heard about banana leaves uh, companies using that tech. Yeah, I think the technology is there. Uh, the real opportunity is, is to scale it on a much bigger scale. So you don't necessarily have to develop the technology, you just have to find a company, work with a company that uh, has the tech and you just scale up the business. Guys, another very interesting area. It's biofuel or, or biogas for cars, for vehicles. There is a lot of adapter to your engine to use a new technology. It's much quicker, it's a quick return. Again, it's lacking scalability. You see a lot of them in a niche market. I've seen some in Kenya and Nigeria, but they haven't scaled up yet because um, it requires capital. It requires a, a drive, a business drive behind it. You know how volatile fuel price uh, oil, oil industry is. And in some market, man, you can make a killing in business. Oh my God, I can only imagine. Uh, that's a business I would love to get in. You know, what I would do, I'm just thinking out loud, that was not the point of this video, but why not? But, uh, you know, I'm thinking is you can develop in a process, right? And you find franchises that want to do the process, pick up the oil or, or the, the, the plastic and do the process and all, and then you buy from them. So you don't have to build the whole value chain yourself. Of course, it takes time, it takes money, it takes energy. You have to build the business model but you have to focus on what you're good at. Uh, if you have the process, then you focus on the process and then you resell it to distributors, but you have to build a value chain. But the good thing about that business is the value chain is not as different as, as the gas station already existing on the network, you know, because you can reuse to the existing engine for specific vehicles, or you can sell direct uh, to government or, or, or businesses that use like trucking, Oh my God, just thinking about it, man. That's a huge opportunity right there. What I would mention about some of the biggest opportunity um, uh, with this global warming, it's not really an opportunity as a business, but it's an opportunity for our, our government, especially the Af you know African government across the continent. Policies, the challenge now comes, wrong policy, actually create more problem and solution, but uh, you can start small and build on it, you know? For example, there should be a, 
a tax to companies that produce plastic and all those things or that produce the wrong packaging and that that, that tax should be used for um, financing companies that do recycling. That would work perfectly. You know, another thing is subsidy or tax any machinery or any companies that you know engage into this uh, this uh, economy become greener should be exempt or pay lower tax. Tax policy and non-existent right now for for green technology or green solution or social impact as a whole, man. That, that blows my mind. We talk, 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 man. I'm tired of going to conferences and just talking, man. And I. And sometimes I get invited to come and talk. I, 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 I want to say no, but then again, you know, losing out on networking and all. But I'm like, these conferences are not, a lot of them are not designed to solve any problem. And it's not, it's not the conference's fault, it's people's fault. Government love to talk in general, you know, but engaging, it's a big machine, I understand. But we are running out, out of time. And I'm going to end with this. You know, we, we don't own this planet, you know, number one. And number two, our kids are the future. They're going to inherit a planet that is dirty, polluted, you know, uh, with a, a, a terrible ecosystem. What are they going to say about the previous generation? First of all, we failed them. Number two, now they got to fix and clean up everything. But we have an opportunity to do some change, some goods now. We're not gonna clean this problem now, that's for sure. But we have the opportunity to start something. So they don't feel like we're a total failure. And that's my fight. That's my fight, it's gonna be my fight till I die. I'm enjoying my Sundays, what about you? Oh, look at this bus. <laughs>